Hello and welcome to The Insider, a show designed to clue you into the biggest news, events and announcements inside the video games industry. Discussing with you some things you may know, some things you may not, and glue holds it all together is a little bit of my own opinion. My name is Paul James, thank you very much for watching, and let's get for the episode. Ah, uh, we simply can't overlook the latest invention from Professor Egad, namely Gooigi. So it's taken me a few days, it's been a pretty long E3, I've co uh, done coverage of all of the other press conferences, and the only one I didn't get to was the one that came last, Nintendo's. It's taken a while to digest because there was quite a lot on show, and in this episode of The Insider, we're going to break down everything we learned, starting with the third parties, moving on to the independent presence, and then of course the big Nintendo first party uh, showcase. We'll finish it up with a little bit of an opinion of the overall event. Let's get into it. When these six destinies entwine, their world will be born anew. Trials of Mana. We'll begin with the third parties, and the list is quite comprehensive, so please bear with me as I glance off camera every now and then, just to get myself up to scratch with what's coming up. So they kick things off with Dragon Quest XI. The Definitive Edition, S, the Switch version, is coming later this year. They shot off a bit of gameplay. This was in support of another announcement that we'll talk about soon. We saw a new game revealed, Dark Crystal, as in The Dark Crystal. This is a tie-in tactics game to the Netflix series that's coming up. It actually looked quite good, a little bit of Final Fantasy Tactics inspired. Um, again, tied into a Netflix series that's coming up, so who knows about the quality. But given what they're doing with uh, Stranger Things as well, the Season 3 game that's going on there, it's quite interesting the step forward that Netflix is making recently using their IP to transfer into the games industry. I'm curious to see how it plays out. One that was really important to me, the Mana franchise, which if you've followed any of my work in the past, you know I'm a big fan of, I did a whole uh, Game of School series dedicated to it. The Mana franchise, one I hold dearly, the first three games, very important to me, and the collection that was released on the Switch for Japan quite some time ago is finally coming to the West. Which means Seiken Densetsu 3, a game that had never been released officially in the West. Sure, I might have this copy that I obtained from... Uh, well, it's, it's a modded, kind of pirated one that someone then put on a cartridge and I bought while I was in France. Good stuff. Um, sure, uh, you know, there's, there's been different ways for us to access those games over the journey, but this is the first official release and it means that as a result it's actually getting a Western title. It's called Trials of Mana. And we're getting a remake of it that's going to come next year. So that's brilliant for fans of the Mana franchise and hopefully means that that franchise is going to continue to develop in the years to come. Going through a few quick fire things here, we had The Witcher 3, much surprise there, but the game is going to be running on the Switch, probably not very well, but it's coming to the Switch. An awkward live action trailer that demoed uh, Resident Evil uh, 1, you know, zero, 01 suddenly led to the announcement that 5 and 6 were coming to the Switch, which was, which was great, but they're two of the weaker entries in the franchise. We got No More Heroes 3 revealed, a new Contra game, Contra Rogue Core re uh, revealed, probably one of the weaker games of the whole lot, but that's life. Uh, Damon Cross Machina showed up, we had Panzer Dragoon, that's getting a remake, that's coming to the Switch, that was revealed there. Astral Chain got a decent uh, showcase, that game's only a month and a half away, so you've got one to look forward to there. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 was present, and you could maybe argue was the best Marvel Avengers related game that we saw this E3. Who knows? Uh, Mar uh, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympics in 2020, that was there, that got a little bit of a showcase. We knew this game was coming, it was only a matter of time. Looks alright, it's gonna do its job. Spyro Reignited Trilogy is coming to the Switch, Alien Isolation is coming to the Switch, as is Super Lucky's Tale, a game that was locked to the Xbox One, is now coming over to the platform. That's great news for all fans of Switch, and basically you know, it covers a really wide spectrum of different titles. The third party presence at Nintendo's Direct this year was quite impressive. Still, we have no choice but to eliminate those who cling to unreasonable ideas of justice. One of the things that we didn't see much of throughout the course of the Direct was actually independent titles. There were a few, and I think this is a product of the fact that Nintendo has its in, uh, Nindie Directs these days. It means that we don't necessarily get as many of these big titles at E3 and it makes sense because there's so many massive, massive Nintendo first party IP that if you reveal this little indie game alongside it, it's often going to get lost in the crowd. I think the indie developers understand this, Nintendo understands this, and it means that they get shown off in different ways throughout the course of the year. I think it's to everyone's benefit. 
So, the games that were there, though, Empire of Sin, which is a 1920s gangster-inspired top-down sort of shooter from the looks of it. It's coming from John Romero. Really prominent developer. If you don't know who he is, go and look him up. But it's coming from John Romero. Go and check that one out. Cadence of Hyrule, which is the Crypt of the Necrodancer cross Zelda kind of collaboration. That's coming. That got a new trailer. It's not far away, so go and check that out. And Hollow Knight Silk Song was there. And impressively, there's a fairly lengthy demo that was available at E3 for people to play. If you weren't at E3, you can, of course, just jump online and have a look at it. It is publicly available now for people to look at, so go and check that out. Really quite impressive. But that's it for the Nintendo Indie Showcase. There was probably a few games around the show floor that weren't shown in the conference itself, and that's great. But in terms of the conference, that's all there was. The first parties. That's what we all come here for. And let's get into it. Things kicked off at the beginning with Smash. I spoke about Dragon Quest before, and Dragon Quest, the hero characters, are coming to Smash. Now, a lot of arguments have been made about Smash over the journey, and the number of uh, sword-wielding fighters, mainly from the Fire Emblem franchise, that have been present in that game, and we're getting a bunch more of them. Seems like we're getting one being branded the hero, and then it allows us to use a whole myriad of different skins. That includes from you know prominent franchises entries like eight or most recently eleven. But it seems like there's going to be a whole bunch of others as well. That's kind of cool. Um, it'll be interesting to see what sort of uh, differences there are between the different hero characters, if any. Hopefully, hopefully there is, and it gives us a little bit of added diversity. And just minor little tweaks from character to character could really adjust the way you have to fight as that character or fight against that character. But if we're talking Smash editions, you can't go past the biggest one, and it's perhaps the announcement from the conference that got the biggest pop from a lot of people. There's one that you could quite easily argue had a bigger response, but we'll get to that one shortly. Banjo and Kazooie are coming to Super Smash Bros. Now this is huge in a bunch of different ways. There is a long history of Smash Bros. It's been going since the Nintendo 64. Not a single game has featured a playable fighter that stems from a Western developed game or franchise. Banjo is the first. It was a rare developed uh, title back in the day on the 64. Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Banjo Nuts and Bolts, the most recent core entry in the franchise, was developed after Rare actually moved across to Microsoft. And yet, Microsoft and Nintendo have come together here, and they're buddy buddy in a lot of different ways these days, but they've come together and allowed Banjo to be made playable fighter in Super Smash Bros. Not coming till later in the year, and I can be patient because he looked amazing. I've kind of fallen off Smash Bros. a little bit in the months since its release, and that's because there's, there's like it's Smash Brothers. I know what it is, I can pick it up and I can play it, and I haven't had necessarily the number of people to play with to get the competition going that I used to really enjoy. Being able to play with the likes of Damo and Jay and others that you've come to meet from Patched over the journey, um, that always kept my interest in Smash really high, but I haven't been able to do as much of that these days, and it's meant that Smash has kind of fallen by the wayside. Banjo, though, is one that's going to bring me back to that game because he's, he just looks like the perfect fit for that game, and I love Banjo, and the art style is brilliant. Luigi's Mansion 3 was there. That is my most anticipated Nintendo game. I know it's not the biggest one of the lot, but it is my personal most anticipated game, and what they showed was brilliant. The addition of Gooigi, yep, Gooigi, is awesome. Looks like it's really going to add some different aspects to the gameplay, the different systems. Luigi's a bit of a badass in this game, and I'm really looking forward to it. For a massive wuss, he's kind of badass. Uh, we got some Fire Emblem Three Heroes gameplay. Looking great. The game's only a month or so away now, so look forward to that one. Animal Crossing was present, it's Animal Crossing New Horizons. And the one thing that's going to perhaps break a few hearts from this conference is the fact that that game was initially intended to release in 2019, it's been delayed. It's not coming till March 20, 2020. And that's a bit of a shame, I can hear Sarah crying, player 2 Sarah, she's probably having a horrible, horrible time at the moment because she was really looking forward to this game and it's not coming this year. But it's coming out next year, it's still less than a year away. Get hyped, get excited, Animal Crossing is going to be huge. Pokemon Sword and Shield were present. We didn't get much of it because we obviously just very recently had a dedicated direct to that game and we learned a ton of it there. We learned that the little uh, Pokeball control that we got last year is not really compatible with it other than popping a Pokemon in and taking for a walk. So that's a gimmick and I'm not interested. But the game's there. We got some plenty of gameplay. Lots of people were able to go and play it on the show floor and that's great for the game. It's a few months away. But 
the biggest announcement for a lot of people, if not Smash, was the fact that the Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, is getting a sequel. We saw a trailer. That it doesn't have a formal title. It was just closed out by saying a sequel to Bre a Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is now in development. But we saw a lot of footage from it. It was about a minute and a half. Must have been a minute and a half, two minutes long worth of trailer there. And there's no gameplay. But we kind of know what to expect from that game already. It looks like Ganondorf is back in some way. It's really interesting. I'm really excited. I can't wait to get back to that game. Nintendo E3 Direct this year was brilliant, without doubt, and I'm, look, I'm a little bit biased towards Nintendo, but if you heard me talk about Square the other day, you know I'm quite, you know, Square biased as well, and it's, there's no doubt in my mind that Nintendo put on the best conference of E3. The competition wasn't stiff this year, lots of developers just ref or publishers just seemed to refuse to show gameplay, which was really, really odd. Nintendo, that is where their strength resides. So we've seen so much of Pokemon, we've seen so much of Fire Emblem, we've seen so much of Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing. The list just goes on and on. And then you add all these other announcements along the way, from Zelda, to Banjo-Kazooie, to, uh, to Dragon Quest, to the third parties that we spoke about before, The Witcher 3, Resident Evil, No More Heroes 3, Astral Chain, all those sorts of things that were present. The indies, we got to see a ton of Hollow Knight Silk Song. Of, like, we got a tease in the in the direct but then more on the show floor Empire of Sin from John Romero there's so many awesome things to come out of this Nintendo Direct the list just keeps going on and on and it doesn't matter what your preference is it, Nintendo has done a great job in recent years of diversifying their portfolio giving us different games because we got you know we understood there's been criticism for years where they've depended on Zelda they've depended on Mario and once you once you exhaust the Zelda Mario Mario Kart Smash Brothers combination that's it that's not the case anymore there's franchises that weren't present in any way, shape, or form from Mario Kart, which I firmly believe there's going to be a ninth entry on the Switch because the only Mario Kart we've got is a port. There's uh, Metro Prime 4 that's obviously still on the way. Bayonetta 3 didn't show up. It's obviously, it's a third-party project, but it's exclusive. Uh, there's plenty of IP that just were not present at this particular showcase, which shows that Nintendo's still got legs. There's still more things they can be doing. It's unbelievable the depth that this studio, this developer, this publisher, this console manufacturer has been developing in recent years. The decision to go uh, handheld slash console at the same time is proven to be very successful. I skipped Link's Awakening along the way. That's brilliant as well. I can't wait to get my hands on that. And that's a game that previously we would only see on something like the 3DS. Now we're getting that on our core system. It looks great, but it's still handheld, so it's still accessible. We can still pick it up and play it at any time. And then when we get a core Zelda, like a Breath of the Wild, which is more of your TV style experience, we can just dock it and keep going. The Switch is continuing to prove its worth and Nintendo is supporting it to the hill and I love what they're doing. What a brilliant direct this was. So that wraps up this episode of The Insider. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Those buttons are down below here and hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted to every new video the moment it goes live on the channel. That includes Patched, the inside of Player 2 Plays, like Game of You, Game of School, and a whole bunch more. There's some awesome stuff there, so please consider checking it out. Visit the website, player2.net.au. The E3 hub is live, it's busy, it's packed, there's so much still coming to it even as we speak. Um, so many articles and previews and opinion pieces and news and and pre predictions and all these sorts of different speculatory pieces that are all coming out around E3. There's so much to discuss. Go and check that out. Player2.net.au Patreon.com slash Player2AU allows you an opportunity to kick in a little bit of support for us from a few dollars where you'll get early access to episodes of this and patched to higher tiers where you can get monthly episode exclusives of different shows. Finally, there's Twitter. You can find me at Paul James Games. The website is Player2AU. And until next time, which will be a wrap-up of everything E3. I'll be discussing my favourite games from the conferences, from the event. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.